outside the walls. Expositions of the outside the walls Peter story. Tiro could Peter what to one na. They stand outside the walls. The teacher who was staying at Rajagaha told this concerning a large number of Petas. Here is the story, is that story in detail. 92 aeons ago, there was a city named Kasi Puri, where a king named Jayasena reigned. His queen was named Sirima, and in her womb was conceived the Bodhisattva Pusa, who in due course attained the perfect enlightenment of a Buddha. King Jayasena became possessive, thinking, My son, it is who performed the great renunciation and has become a Buddha. Mine alone is the Buddha, mine the Tamma, mine the Sangha. And all the time waited upon them himself, giving no one else an opportunity. The Lord's three brothers, younger brothers by a different mother, thought, Buddhas indeed arise for the benefit of the whole world, not just for the sake of one person. Yet our father does not give anyone else an opportunity. Now, how might we get to wait upon the Sangha? And then the thought occurred to them, come on, let's devise some means. So they made it appear as though there, was, there were a disturbance on the border. When the king heard of this disturbance on the border, he sent these three sons to pacify the border. They went and pacified things when they returned. The king was pleased and granted them a boon and saying, Take whatever you wish. We wish to wait upon the Lord, they said. You may take anything apart from him, replied the king. We do not care for anything else they say in that case set a time limit and take him they begged for seven years but the king would not give this they begged successfully for six five four three two years one year for seven months six five four months for three months at which the king said take him they approached the lord and said lord we wish to wait upon the Lord for three months. Lord, may the Lord accept us for these three months. Residents of the rainy seasons. The Lord consented by his silence. Those three then sent a letter to their agent in that district where the Lord would be staying, stating, The Lord is to be waited upon by us during these three months. First of all, build a vihara and then protect. Procure, procure everything that will be needed for waiting upon the Lord. He sent word back when he had procured everything. The Dresden yellow clothes and together with 2,500 male helpers conducted the Lord and the order of monks to that district, waiting upon them respectfully and handed over the vihara to them and had them pass the rainy seasons later, rainy seasons there. Their treasurer, a householder's son, and married, had faith and devotion. With due care, he gave their items for almsgiving for the order of the monk of monks, with the Buddha at its head. The agent in that district received these, and, and along with as many as 11,000 men from that district organized the almsgiving with due care. Now, some people there were of corrupt mind. They obstructed the arms, ate the married offerings themselves, and set fire to the refectory. When they had celebrated the Pawarana ceremony, the sons of the king worshipped the Lord and then went back with the Lord going before them into their father's presence. After the Lord had gone there, he attained Parinibbana. In due course, the king's sons, their agent in that district, and their treasurer died and arose in heaven together with the company of helpers, whilst those people of corrupt mind arose in the hells. Ninety-two aeons passed. Thus, whilst both groups of people arose in heaven after heaven and in hell after hell, respectively. 
Then during this auspicious eons, at the time of the Lord Kasapa, those people of corrupt mind arose amongst the Petas. At that time, when people give, gave alms for the sake of their Peta relatives, they dedicated them, saying, Let this be for our relatives, at which they attained excellence. Now, when those Petas saw this, they approached Kasapa and asked, how, Lord, might we also attain such excellence? The Lord said, you will not attain now. However, in the future, there will be a perfectly enlightened one named Gotama. At the time of this Lord, there will be a king named Bimbisara, who, will, who was your relative 92 eons ago. He will give alms to that Buddha and dedicate them to you. Then you will attain such excellence. It is said that when he said this, it seemed to those petas as though he had said that. It is said that when he said this, it seemed to those petas as though he had said they would attain it on the following day. Then, when one Buddha interval had passed, and our Lord had arisen in the world, those three sons of the king, together with a thousand men, also fell from the Deva Loka and arose in a Brahmin clan in the kingdom of Magadha. In due course, they went forth into the harmless life of the ascetic and became the three, became the three matted, hair, matted hair ascetic of Gaya Sisa. Their agent in that district became King Bimbisara, and their treasurer, the householder's sons, became the wealthy merchant Visaka, whose wife, named Dhammadinna, was the daughter of a wealthy merchant, whilst the remainder of that company arose as the king's entourage. When our Lord had arisen in the world and had spent the seven weeks following his enlightenment, he came in due course to Benares, where he sat rolling the wheel of Dhamma and instructed first the group of five and then their three matted hair as ascetic with their 1,000 followers and then went to Raja Gaha. He they are established in the Sota Pati fruit king Bimbisara, who had come to visit him that very day, along with eleven myriads of Brahmin householders who were inhabitants of Anga Magadha. He accepted the king's invitation to a meal on the following day, and the next day entered Rajagaha with Saka, Lord of Devas, who had assumed the form of a Brahmin youth walking in front of him, praising him with the verses that begin. The tamed with the tame, the freed with the free, the Lord bright as golden jewel, entered Rajagaha with the former matted, matted hair ascetics. And in the king's residence, he accepted a great almsgiving. Now the Peter stood surrounding the house, thinking, now the king will dedicate the alms to us. But when he gave the alms, the king thought only about a side for this Lord's Vihara, wondering, now where should the Lord stay? And did not dedicate the alms to anyone. Not getting the alms in this way, those petals lost hope and that night wailed in utter and dreadful distress about the king's residence. The king became agitated and was filled with fear and trembling. At daybreak, he told the Lord, I heard such noise during the night. Whatever is going to happen to me? Lord, the Lord said, Have no fear, great king. No evil will befall you. You will be all right. The fact is that former relatives of yours who have arisen in the monks, the Peters have been going around for one whole Buddha's interval with the expectation that you would give alms to a Buddha and dedicate them to them. But when you gave alms yesterday, you did not dedicate them, and they lost hope and wailed in such dreadful distress. Would they receive them, the Lord, if alms were given now? Asked the king. Yes, great king. Then let the Lord accept my invitation for today, and I will dedicate the alms to them. The Lord consented by his silence. The king went to his residence and had a great almsgiving prepared and had the time to renounce the Lord. 
the Lord went to the king's royal court together with the order of monks and sat down on the appointed seat. The Peters thought, today we may get something, and went stood as outside the walls, and so on. The Lord brought it about that they all became visible to the king. As he gave the water donation, the king dedicated it, saying, let this be for my relatives. At that moment, lotus ponds came into being for the petas covered with lotuses and blue water lilies. They bathed and drank in them, and with their distress and weariness and thirst allayed, they became the color of gold. The king gave nice gruel and hard and soft food and dedicated this and that. Very instant heavenly rice gruel and hard and soft foods came into being. When they ate these, their faculties were refreshed. The king gave clothing and lodging and dedicated this and heavenly clothing and pa palaces variously furnished with coaches and covers and so on came into being for them all this excellence and of, of theirs was made manifest to the king just as the lord had resolved it should be and when the king saw it he was thoroughly delighted then when the lord had finished his meal and eaten his fill, he told king Bimbisara, the outside the walls, paid that story in order to show his appreciations. One, they stand outside the walls and at junction or and road forks, they go to their own house and stand at the door's posts. Two, though abundant food and drink, food hard, food hard and soft are served, no one remembers those creatures on account of their deeds. Three, so they who passes the pity give for their relatives the purest, the choicest, timely and fitting food and drink, saying, Let this be for our relatives. May our relatives be happy. 4. And those better relatives who have gathered and assembled there respectfully show their appreciation for that abundant food and drink, saying, 5. A long life to our relatives by means of whom we have gain all this for honor has been paid to us and those who give are not with uh, without fruit six for there is no cultivation there nor is there here any cattle rearing known nor are there such things as trading and buying and selling the gold the petas those who have passed on are there sustained by what is given from here seven as water rain on the uplands flows down to the lowlands, even so does what is given from here benefit the petas. 8. Just as swollen streams swell the oceans, even so does what is given from here benefit the petas. 9. He gave to me, he worked for me, he was a relative, friend and companion to me, thus recalling what they used to do, one should give donation for the petas. 10. No amount of weeping and sorrow or any other lamentation benefits the peta, though their relatives persist in them. 11. But this donation that has been made and firmly planted in the Sangha will serve with immediate effect their long term benefit. 12. Now, this, the duty to one's relative has been pointed out and the highest honor has been paid to the peta's strength has been furnished to the monks and not thrifting the meritorious deed pursued by you. 1. Herein, outside the walls, Tirokudesu. On the further side of the walls, they stand, Titanti. This expression asserts they are standing in contrast to other postures such as sitting or so on, meaning they stand out thus outside, beyond the fences that surround houses, and at junction and road forks, Sandi Singha Teke Sucha, Sandi Sucha, Singha Teke Sucha. Resolutions of compound, places where four roads meet, house junctions, wall junctions, and light junctions are called junctions, while the road forks are places where three roads meet. Stand at the doorpost, 
Dwara Baha Su Titanti. Stand learning against the posts of the city gates and of the doors of houses. They go to their own house. Agan Tuan Sakangarang. Their own house can be the house for, of a former relative as well as their own house in which they dwell as owners. Since they come to regarding both these are as their own, he therefore said, they go to their own house. The Lord said the verse beginning, they stand outside the wall showing the king and the many peters who were extremely ugly, deformed and terrible to behold undergoing the fruit of envy and selfishness who were stood outside the world and so on having come to Bimbisaro's resident regarding regarding it as their own house since it was the house of a former relatives though they themselves had not form, formally dwelt there in the past he then uttered the second verse beginning though abundant food and drink showing the dreadful nature of the deed done by them here to here in abundant pahute plentiful much meaning as much as it needed it is permissible to substitute the syllable pa for the syllable ba thus transforming bahu in the text pahu as in such passages as though passes in plenty he does not support pahu santu na bharati some, however, read abandoned bahuke, but this is a careless reading. Food and drink, anna panam hi, anneche paneche, resolution of companion in all alternative grammatical form. Food hard and soft, kajje budje, kajje che budje che, resolution of companion. By means of these four, he indicated the four sort of food that which is eaten, drunk, chewed, and severed. Sever Devoured, are served, upatite, are begun, upagamma, to be set out, tite, means, meaning, are given out, are not, are got ready. No one remembers this creature, nate sanko chi sarati satanang. No one, neither their mother, nor father, nor son, nor grandson, remembers those creatures who gave, who have arisen on the Peta plain. For what reason? On account of their deeds. By reason of that, miserably deed that they, they, themselves did consisting in the failure to give and the preventions of that alms given and so on. It is this deed of, their, of theirs that does not allow their relatives to remember them. When he had shown how, in spite of the existence of plentiful food and drink, drink and so on, due to that wicked deed, there was not even the slightest recollections on the part of those relatives of the petas waiting in expectation of a gift from their relatives. The Lord then uttered the third verse beginning. So they who passes pity give for their relatives praising alms given on behalf of relatives who have arisen on the peta plain. Three, hearing so even is a term of comparison. It can be constructed in two ways. Though they do not remember those creatures on account of account of uh, uh, now what evil deed has was done by you by body, spirit, or mind. As a result of which deed do you devour the flesh of your sons? Five. Here in evil deed, dukkatam. Evil conduct as a result of which deed kisse kama vipa kena as a result of what sort of deed meaning did you destroy a living being or was it some other deed such as taking what had not been given and so on some read as a result of which deed kena kama vipa kena then that petty relating to the elder the deed she had done. Said, six, my co-wife became pregnant and I devised a wicked deed against her. Depraved in mind, I caused her to miscarry. Seven, her two months old embryo flowed out just like blood. Then her mother became angry with me and collected her relatives together. She made me make an oath and then them abused me. Eight. I told a terrible lie when I made that oath 
that if this were done by me, I might devour the flesh of my sons. Nine, it is both as a result of that deed and due to that fact that I lied that I devour the flesh of my sons and am smeared with blood and matter. Six, here, here in co-wife, subpati is said of woman with the same husband, and I devise a wicked deed against her, Tassa Papang Achita Ying, and I plan a wicked and gruesome deed against her, against that co-wife, depriving mine Paduta Manasa with depraved intent or with a depraved mind. Two, two months old, Dwe Masiko, having been established in the womb for two months, it was two months old, flowed out just like blood, Lohitam Nebe Pagari. As it perished, it became just like blood and stream out. Then her mother became angry with me and collected her relatives together. Tat Asa, Mata, Kupita, Maihang, Nati, Samanai. Then my co-wife's mother became angry with me and surrounded her relatives together. An alternative reading is Tat Asya, which divides into the two words Tatu Asa, there upon her, Oth Sapatam, Oth, and made them abuse Pari Bhasa Paicha, and made them threatened and frightened. Eight, I told a lie when I made the oath that oath Sapatam Musa Vadam Abhasim. Abasi, abasi I told a lie when I made that oath. That is, there was no truth in my pointing out that I had not done what I had in fact done, saying, if these were done by me, might I be such and such. If these were done by me, I might devour the flesh of my sons. Putta mangsani kadami sachetang pakatam maya. This then shows the nature of oath made, meaning that if this wicked deed, this miscarriage were done by me, I might devour. For a second, they respect with no derangement of mind, they rejoice. So their appreciation and became full of joy, happiness at the thought, may these arms be for our happiness and well being. Five, a long life, Chirang Jivantu. May they have a long life, may they be, be long lived. To our relatives, no nati, to our relations, by means of whom, ye samhetu, by reason of whom, dependent upon whom, we have gained labama se, we have gained such excellence. This shows the manner of the praise for their relatives shown by the petas who are experienced the excellence gained by means of their dedication. A donation produces its fruits immediately when three factors are present. The successful attainment of those worthy of donations, the dedication by the one who gives and appreciation of the petas. Of these, the one who gives is the particular means. For this reason, they say, by means of whom we have gained all this, for honor has been paid to us. Amhakancha kata puja. For honor has been paid to us by those who give dedicating these those arms. Thus, let this be for our relatives. And those who give are not without fruits. Daya ka cha anipala, since that deed consists in giving away, gives its fruits there and then for them in whose heart it was conceived. Here it may be asked, 
how it is do only those who have arisen to pay the plane gains the excellence by means of their relatives or do others also gain it nothing need to be said nothing need be said here by us since this has been explained as follows by the lord himself master gotama we brahmins give alms and perform the shraddha shraddha writes saying may these arms be of benefit to the petas who were our relatives and blood relations may our peta relatives and blood relations enjoy these arms master gotham are those arms really of benefit to those petas who were our relatives and blood relations do these peta relatives and blood relations really enjoy their arms if they are in the appropriate place brahman they are of benefit to them if they are in a place that is not appropriate they are not but what is the appropriate place master gotama and what the place that us that is not appropriate here brahmin a certain person destroys living beings takes what has not been given is of wrong conduct as a sensual desire speaks falsely is of slanderous speech is harsh spoken talk Privilegedly is covetous, malevolent, malevolent in the mind and of wrong view. At the breaking up of the body after dying, he arises in hell. He sustains himself there. He maintains himself there on whatever as the food of the creatures of hell. This Brahman is place that is not appropriate. Those arms are of no benefit to one who remains there. Here, Brahmin, a certain per person destroys living beings, is of wrong view. At the breaking of the body, after dying, he arises in the animal womb. He sustains himself there. He maintains himself there on whatever it is, whatever is the food of the creatures of the animal womb. This Brahmin is a place that is not appropriate. Those arms are of no benefit to one remains there here brahmin a certain person refrains from destroying living beings refrains from taking what has not been given refrains from wrong conduct as the as to sensual desire refrain from speaking falsely refrains from slanderous speech refrains from being harsh spoken refrains from talking frivolously is not covetous not malevolent in mind and is of with right view at the breaking of the body after dying he arises in the company of human beings he sustains himself there, he maintains himself there on whatever is the food of human beings. This Brahmin is a place that is not appropriate. Those arms are of no benefit to one who remains there. Here, Brahmin, a certain person refrains from destroying living beings, is of right view at the breaking of the body after dying. He arises in the company of the Devas. He sustains himself there, he maintains himself there. On whatever is the food of the devas, this Brahman is a place that is not appropriate. Those arms are of no benefit to one who remains there. Here, Brahman, a certain person destroys living beings, is of wrong view. At the breaking of the body of the dying, he arises on the peta plane. He sustains himself there. He maintains himself there. On whatever is the food of the creatures of the peta planes. Or he sustains himself there, he maintains himself there on whatever his friends, companions, or relatives, and blood relations offer, offer up from here. This Brahman is the appropriate place. Those arms are of benefit to one who remains there. But if the master Gotama, that Peta, who was our relatives and blood relation, has not arisen in that place, who is it that enjoys the arms? Other Petas, Brahman. Who were your relatives and blood relations who have arisen in that place? These enjoys the, these enjoy the arms. But if the master Gotama, that Peta who was our relative and blood relations, has not arisen in that place, and other Petas who were our relatives and blood relations have also not arisen in that place, who is it that enjoys the arms? But this is impossible, Brahmin. This cannot be. That that place should be empty for so long at a time of ta those petas who were your relatives and blood relations. And anyway, Brahmin, those who give are not with 
without fruit than to show that those who have arisen on the Peta Plains are sustained by what is given from here in the absence of any other source, such as cultivation and cattle rearing on so that might be a reason of their obtaining excellence, the verse begin, beginning, for there is no was said. Herein, for there is no cultivation there, nahi tatta kasi atti, for there is no cultivation on the Peta plain dependent upon which the petas might live in comfort, nor is there here any cattle rearing known go vidjati. Here on this peta plain, not only in the, is there no cultivation, there is moreover also no cattle rearing known dependent upon which they might live in comfort, nor are there such things as trading vanija tadisi nati nor are there even such things as trading which might be a cause of their obtaining excellence and buying and selling with gold nor are there even such things as buying and selling with gold which might be a cause of their obtaining excellence the peta the petas those who have passed on are there sustained by what is given from here? Ito dinnena ya penti peta kala gatha tahim. They are sustained, they continue their existence entirely by what is given from here by their relatives or by their friends and companions. The petas, peta, those creatures who have arisen on the peta plain, those who have passed on kala gatha those who have passed on account of its being the time of their death an alternative reading in those who have died kala katha those who have done their comic time those who have done their dying those who have reached their death their tahim on that peta plane he then uttered the two verses beginning as water rain on the top land to illustrate the by way of simile the meaning of what has of what had just been said seven eight this is the meaning just as water powered down by clouds on the upland on elevated ground on high ground flows down to the lowlands goes to the hollows on the portions of the ground that is low lying so in that same way to do the alms given from here benefit the petas accrue to them on the appearance of their fruit the world of the petas where the alms are of benefit is like the low-lying place to which the water flows down he said accordingly this brahman is the appropriate place those alms are of benefit to one who remains there and just a stream might might reverse that become swollen with water falling from mountain cleft and crevices, from gullies and ravines, from pools and great lakes, swell the oceans. Even so, do arms given from here benefit the petas in the aforesaid manner. Since the petas who go to the house of their relatives desperately hoping that they might get something from there are not able to beg, please give us this. He therefore uttered the verse beginning. He gave to me, showing that the son of the family show should make a donation, recollecting memorable occasion concerning them. Nine. This is the meaning he gave to me. Those riches or that grains he worked for me himself, completely fulfilling what had to be done, since so and so was connected on my mother's or my father's side. He was relative. Since he was capable of being my refuse on account of his affection, he was friend. While since so and so was my playmate in making mud pies, he was companion. Recalling all this, one should give donation for the for the petas. One should consign the arms to them. An alternative reading is a donation is to be given. Dakina Dajja, recalling by recalling what they used to do in this manner. With this he gave to me, and so on. A donation is to be given for the petas. This is what it said. This is the accusative case, 
recalling anusaram with the scope of the instrumental by recalling anusaratha 10 11. he uttered the verse beginning no amount of weeping showing that whilst beings persist in, in continual weeping and sorrow and so on at the death of relatives they give nothing for their benefit and that this weeping and sorrow and so on are merely and entirely to their own self-torture which provide nothing of benefit to the petas he then uttered a further verse beginning but this to demonstrate the useful nature of donations given by the king of magadha the meaning of these is just the same as that given above 12 the lord then uttered the concluding verse beginning now this the duty to one's relatives praising the kings on account of those genuine qualities that is since by the king giving giving that donation by this doing what should be done by one relative for another the duty to one's relatives has been pointed out it has been made known to the many people pointing out and making it known and making it making it known that they too should fulfill their duty to their relatives in this same way and by causing the patas to come into positions of heavenly excellence the highest honor has been paid to the patas by his satisfying with food and drink and so on the order of monks with the buddha at its head strength has been furnished to the monks and by giving rise to a generous intent accompanied by the quality of pity and so on not trifting the meritorious deed pursued hearing the duty to one's relatives nyati dhammo the performance of what should be done by one relative for another highest ulara beneficial magnificence strength balam physical strength pursuit pasutam accumulated now here by means of the statement now this the duty to one's relative has been pointed out the lord instructed the king with a talk on dhamma for his indicating the duty to one's relative is here an instruction by means of this statement and the highest honor has been paid to the petas he roused him for his praising highest is here arousing us to his paying that honor again and again by means of the statement strength has been furnished to the monks he wetted he wetted him for the furnishing of strength to the monks is here a wet thing by increasing his effort his effort in furnishing strength in that particular manner by means of the statement and not trifling the meritorious deed pursued by you he made him bristle with joy for the commendation of pursuing meritorious deed is here making him bristle with joy on account of the nature of his description of his genuine qualities this is how it should be construed here this is the way in which it is to be understood at the end of the stretching inside into the dhamma arose the eighty-four thousand beings through properly striving their hearts having been agitated by this description of the distressing circumstances of arising on the peta plane on the days that followed too he thought this same outside the walls teaching to devas and men such that for seven days there arose this very same insight into the dhamma